Hi, I'm Johnny. I am a global artist ambassador for Phoenix 360, and I'm blessed to be joined today by the motivational speaker and musical artist, Rosemary Salem. Hi, Rosemary. How are you? Hi, John. How are you? I am good, and I'm very happy to be meeting with you this morning. So, Rosemary, I would like to share some of the work that you have up on your YouTube channel, if I may, some of your motivational speaking. Okay, if we tune into that now? Yes. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Perfect. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Um, so everyone, let's tune in now and watch some of the motivational speaking from Rosemary Salem. I'm Minister Rosemary Salem. Uh, welcome to Warrior Faith Day 2. Um, I, if you are not already um, a part of the Warrior Faith 3-Day Fast, this is Day 2. Is it too late for you to join? No, because fasting is intentional. So go ahead and click the link in my bio. Um, and make sure you join. If you do not have um, Telegram, the app, go ahead and download it. And then once you download it, come back and click the link so you can be subscribed to the channel so you can get everything that we're doing, the chapters that we're reading, and exactly what we're doing um, during this fast. The fast ends tomorrow at 6 p.m. And we have a celebration call because I believe that those who are participating will definitely testify. So I want you all to click the link and do not miss what God is doing to those individuals who are participating in this fast. Do not miss what God is doing, okay? So this is um, the daily devotional that I'm doing for everybody because I understand that people, you know, everybody didn't necessarily sign up, but I wanted to, you know, do something for those who were intentional about joining the fast and do something more public for those who are just, you know, who just needs a word from the Lord. Um, so today's devotional um, is what's your plan? So during the fast, <coughs> we have two chapters that we're reading, um, but I'm not going to tell you that because you got to sign up, but we're going to go to one of the chapters, okay? And that's uh, Habakkuk 2. And um, Habakkuk 2 is one of the most quoted scriptures ever um i think it's habakkuk two and three or two and two um but it's the scripture where it talks about writing the vision and making it plain now i want you all to understand that you, we gotta break that down a little bit more i think people think about plans and visions and oh write it write it down make it plain when you say make something plain, it's almost as if that if you are writing it down, anyone who comes across the information should be able to understand what you are doing, where you are going. You should be able to un be able to understand the plan. You should be able to take this same plan and this same vision to other people and they should be able to understand what's the plan and where you are going. If it is not plain, then it is not finished. Rosemary, very powerful. And it's just really nice to see you performing. Can you tell me, you know, where are you from and, and what inspired you to become a motivational speaker and also a musical artist? Okay. Um, well, I was originally born in Tacoma, Washington, and I was raised in Memphis, Tennessee, and I currently reside in Houston, Texas. Um, what got me started, uh, it's a more complex uh, story, um, but to kind of narrow it down, <clears throat> I had hit a point where I had nothing to turn to but myself. And when I learned that the things that I was saying to myself was changing my own life, I began to find power in sharing those things with others. And I noticed that there's something here. People feel empower people feel inspired people feel better when I speak to them in a certain way so that is kind of how the ball got rolling rolling and I've always been involved in um drama music choir my whole entire life since I could remember I was singing so music has always been something a part of me it just recently resurfaced because I feel that um now I have dealt with like a lot of uh, grief that I had when I lost my mother. I kind of went through that period where oh, she's not here, so I don't want to do music. I don't want to sing. And 10 years later, you see me getting ready to release a song, and it's 
amazing, you know, how you go through life and you go through processes, but then you realize that you come back to the person that you were in the beginning, which is who you all are getting to know now. And I'm reliving um, an experience that I never really lost, but I'm stepping in fully and walking into. Oh man, that is beautiful, Rosemary. I mean, you're really stepping into your power, right? And for a while it yes. made dormant because you were mourning <clears throat> your mom. Yes. And, and I get it, you know, but now there's like this expression that's coming out almost in our honor with the power of her coming through. Yes. And, and so that's the beautiful, you know, aspect of these relationships that we have, even when they're gone in the physical, they're still happening in the spiritual. Um and so, you know, and so, and that's a real blessing, but it's painful and it's difficult and, and all of us are not spared from it, you know? Um, so right. that's how it's very relatable, but I like how you're empowering yourself. I love your, your shirt says woman of God. That, that makes me excited too. You know, um, yes. there's, there's a lot, I think that we could share and discuss, but I, I wanted to, to just focus on your art and the speaking for a moment. And so okay. in your motivational speaking, you can sense the, the feeling that others who are responding to, you know, your uplifting mm -hmm. words, the power and energy <clears throat> of those words, um, the healing yes. in those words. Uh, and, yes. and the music is also the, an accompaniment for and singing that expression is really divine. So I, I'm so thankful that these talents of yours, you're utilizing now and sharing them. Were there other people that helped to inspire you? You mentioned your mom, of course, but were there other artists or teachers or uh, speakers that you have followed or were inspired by that were like, wow, that you know, I can see myself stepping into that kind of role? Yes, um, the number one person was my dad. Um, he uh, is still preaching to this day. He's been preaching for over 30 some years. And he was the first person that I personally ever remember getting in front of a massive amount of people speaking. And I remember as a little girl, many people running up to me, grown men at that saying, your daddy saved my life. And I was wow. like, okay. And I'm like a child child. So I'm like, a little scared because I was always like a boxed child. I didn't like people and uh, people talking to me and stuff like that. But I would always take such a great like sense of appreciation for my father's gift of speaking. And I wanted that gift um, very badly. And um, it's so funny. I feel like I was manifesting, you know, what I'm doing now at that age because I knew that I had something too. I was like, this is my dad. Like, this is not like a stranger. This is my actual father. And he's so powerful. And he sought after, you know, which we were traveling. We weren't, you know, um, I feel that my father really showed me dedication to what you want to do because it wasn't easy, you know, traveling from city to city and having to grab all your kids and you know, showing face. I understand and I appreciate his journey now more as an adult because I'm looking back at it from the eyes of looking at him as the man and not as the perfect father that I envisioned him to be. Right. And um, he was a person that inspired me the most to step out. And my mother was a singer and she had went through a lot of medical issues but the biggest thing was she had a stroke um so that paralyzed her on her right side permanently for the rest of her life so I never got a chance to see my mother in her full fullness of health and when it pertains to the full workings of her body and her mind so um but one thing that always like stood out my mom still wanted to sing in the choir you know paralyzed and all she still got up there with the assistance every Sunday to sing that song one I more sunny it. day. And, <laughs> and people loved it. Like, you yes. know, and I was like, you know, so I had some 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 great examples of people just doing it because they love it, not doing it because, you know, they're getting money for it. And I've always been passionate more than anything about the things that I do. 
oh rosemary that's beautiful and and then and, and like you know and god bless your dad who's who basically gave you this power and you know you looked up to him and he had this way with others to empower them and um and that's those are big kind of shoes to fill so some i can see also like how that was frightening as you were a kid um i love that testimony because it's so relatable and 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 i can see you as that child um still and it's but now you're in the spiritual maturity you start to recognize yeah. now you know the the what are the trials that that your dad endured and that you endure yeah. now as an adult and um and that is really a gift once you cross that threshold and actually can relate to that parent no longer as the child but also as the adult that sees them almost like a peer and that My dad that's real beautiful. Um, so I'm so glad that you have this legacy that you are delivering on. Um, and that is the creative inspirations of your parents. And, uh, and I'm, and I'm sure also of others, um, who you have embraced throughout your journey as well, who have, who've uplifted you. And that gives you courage to go out there and lift others. So I, that's beautiful, Rosemary. I'm so excited for, what you could be working on soon. So let's talk a little bit about your music. You've got something that you're working on, don't you? That's you're going to be dropping and, and you know, in the, in the near future, I hope. Um, yes. so let's, hear, let's hear about that. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, this is super exciting. So this year, well, moving to Texas, I feel that this was the process of my real deep inner healing and deliverance process for myself. I feel like I finally got to know Jesus. I finally got to know him from who I know him as. So my definition comes from me. It doesn't come from any outside source. And with that being said, I was able to get back to what I love because the first type of singing I ever did was in the church. You know, I wasn't singing um, anything but to God. And I found <clears throat> my peace still to this day. I will, if I'm having a bad day, Y'all know you're going to hear Rosemary singing. <laughs> she's going to be humming. She's going to be doing something uh, in regards to worshiping because that just creates an atmosphere for me to feel at peace within myself. And I'm just doing nothing but spreading the messages that what I went through in, in that time, getting to know Jesus was the answer and many people are looking for the answer well I can't figure it out I don't know how to get out of this rut I'm tired of being in this place and I know that oftentimes you know everybody doesn't have to believe what you believe and my message is not for you to be forced to believe what I believe my message is for you to try it because you know we can go to the grocery store and they'll be stop you in your tracks and say, hey, we got this new cottage cheese. And you may be a person who never, ever, ever experienced cottage cheese before, but you had an opportunity to try it. And in that try, you determine what that outcome is. But I know what I tried and what worked for me. And if it worked for me and because I want to be that person, that's in the grocery store that's stopping you in your tracks just to give you an opportunity to try something that I personally stand behind and that I'm representing, mm -hmm. then maybe, just maybe, you can go go get some more because you don't, they don't get, you know what I'm saying? You can get another cup, but the, the, the ultimate goal is to get you to go down that same aisle and go get the same thing with the same imagery that you saw so that you can have it for yourself. And that is my goal. So my song is called Free. And it's really, it is my single of um, my album. My album is called Free from Captivity. And it will be released this year. I do not have a date, but the people who have had the blessing and the opportunity to hear Free, they, the feedback has been really, really good and detailed and amazing. But I know that I went in that booth and I walked in that studio and I didn't have a song. I didn't have a song. I had a beat. Yeah. I had a beat 
and I had no lyrics and I was freaking out. And I was like, okay, we got two hours and I ain't got nothing. I don't have nothing. I don't have a do I pop pop nothing. <laughs> but I saw Holy Spirit come in that studio and write that song. Wow. And once again, my experiences are nothing special because they are the experiences that you too can have. And what my only thing is that people find rest in knowing that they are free. Amen to that. Let me tell you something, Rosemary, that is beautiful. And also your walk with Jesus and in your faith, you know, that has inspired you to be able to share the fact that something that fits for you and that gives you such joy and peace could also fit for others. And so that yes. relationship you have with God and also your interest in having a relationship and sharing that joy and peace with others to try it on, you know what I mean? To see if it fits because it's, it's a blessedly joyful, you know, experience to have a relationship with God, however you want to envision or imagine or walk with, whether it's Jesus or some other form. But um, this is why I love also is that it, there's so much isolation. There's so much loneliness right now. There's so people feel like they're not connected to anything and they're, you know, alien in some way. But if you have this relationship, with higher power, with the source, with God, you're never alone, right? You're always empowered. And also yes. the angelic realms of everyone that was ever part of this world and also related to your family, etc. There's a much more meaningful, deep relationship you can have with creation. And, and that's what we want to encourage people to explore and discover in themselves, because it's within them. And us, yes. and, and then you and I, my friend, could go on and on and pray and sing, and it, it would be a joy for me. It's really nice to meet you. I'm really glad you're going to be part of the Phoenix 360 family, and I'm looking forward to everyone tuning in to Rosemary Salem's social media channels. You can find them below our interview today, and we're going to look for her music coming up on those channels as well as Phoenix 360, and thank you, Rosemary, for being with me today. Thank you. It's an honor. Likewise. Bless you. Take care. Just surrender. I let you have it your way for a long time. But God loves you that much that he's not going to let you drown in your own self-destruction. He going to keep sending the helpers. But do not think that time is on your side because it's not. We sit here and we're worried about COVID and all these other things. Where are you going? What is your plan? Is your plan based off of where you're going to go after this life? Or is it based off of your selfish ambitions for right now needs? We have to get in order. And I say we, I speak very much so. I preach and I minister in French. We, we, we. Because a lot of y'all glorify leaders to the point where when they fail and fall short, you're so busy condemning them that you are missing the anointing that's on their life. So that's why we have to get in a, a position where we are in alignment with who God created us to be.